Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mohammed Daw. I am a doctor. I am a forensic doctor from Syria. I have worked a long time with uh, uh, violence against women uh, in Syria before. I was in charge also to uh, to start a national uh, plan for protect women against uh, violence. Uh, I did many research and study about that, and today I am here to talk about violence against refugee women. Some guideline on preven uh, prevention and response to such cases. As you see here, we will start with definition, what is violence against women and why we have, why we are talking about that, what is the epidemiology of that, how consequences of such violence will be on uh, the woman and how we can recognize and manage and at the end we can prevent such cases. At the end we have, uh, we will take a look about women rights worldwide. Next one please. Here uh, we see the violation, what is the definition? What do we mean when we are talking about violence against women? It's an international definition and it's agreed by UN organizations that violence against women means any act of gender-based violence. This term gender-based violence was new a little bit, but it was approved by everyone. When we are talking about violence against women, that means any result or likely to be a result in physical or sexual or psychological harm that maybe uh, affect the woman or make her suffer. Including, including many things, as you see here, that will cover everything about violence against women. Here also about sexual violence, it's very important because it's uh, a serious kind of violence and it's very important to recognize wh what do you mean by that. It means any sexual act, attempt to obtain sexual act or other act direct against a person's sexuality using cautions by any person regardless of their relationship of the victim. We will see internationally, as a study proved that, this violence against women, especially sexual one, is maybe done by the partner in most cases. So regardless if it's done by the partner or relative or any other uh, person, it's considered a violence against women. Next one, please. Why we are talking about violence against women? Now it's approved or it's uh, published worldwide one in search of the woman they are suffering from violence. Many kind of violence women will be suffer worldwide, not only as a refugee woman. Uh, maybe it will be sometimes verbal, physical, psychological, or any kind of uh, violence. Four million women and girls are trafficked annually. It's UN statistic and it's proved. When we are talking about women as a refugee, we call that a duplicated violence because she is suffering as a woman, as we will see, and she is suffering as a refugee. So the suffering here and the violence is duplicated for the woman. This is the trip of the refugee for everyone. People are coming from Afghanistan, through Turkey, from Syria, from Iraq, from uh, African uh, countries, from Libya, from Morocco. This is a long trip and the woman is suffering during the road, even before she arrived to the asylum country. So we can uh, see how long the road is long and how much the suffering during this long trip, because of that we are talking about duplicated violence against women as refugee. She, is, she was suffering in her country and during the uh, road to the or the trip to the country where she will get uh, asylum, she is also suffering. And here, when she is in the camp, as we will see, there's different kind of suffering. Next one, please. Yeah. This is a risk index. As we can see, the high risky countries in the woman where maybe the woman will face or exposed to sexual violence, we will see uh, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and some African countries. 
in their country they are suffering and the last thing that they will need to suffer where they are uh, when they are coming to uh, be as a refugee in other country so they have already suffering from this and we don't want anyone to get suffer here in the asylum countries next one please here we can see what types of violence against women it started from verbal maybe to physical, domestic, sexual, trafficking, honor killing, a lot of things. All these cases maybe the woman will face in her life. Different types, different kinds of violence that woman may be faced in their life. And as a refugee woman, they will face another uh, cases as we will see now. Next one, please. Before we'll go to talk about uh, the suffering here, here's some, something about the health consequences of violence against women. Uh, as we see, something will be, be, be fatal. Some women are going to suicides or be also homicides. We have uh, some physical consequences and for health, STD, injuries, a lot of things. And also we have some mental consequences, depression, uh, sleeping and eating disorders, a lot of things, these all are uh, consequences of uh, the violence against women. Next one, please. Recognition and man management of the violence. When we face such cases, we need to know some guidelines, some advices, how we can recognize such cases and how, to, how we can act against that. We have some problem when we are working in uh, protection for refugee women because each refugee is a unique cases, case. So because she came from different culture, different country, some people came from Afghanistan, the others from Syria, the others from Africa, we can see a different kind of culture, background, so people where, where they are come from. So it's one of the problem when we are trying to recognize or to report such cases even some ladies you don't want to say what happened with them especially when we are talking about some sexual abuse because in their culture and their mind that will lead to scandal for them so they preferred not to talk about that this is one of the problems that many cases are not reported because the woman they said we don't want to talk about that that will harm us especially if they know people from their country or, or from their area, it will be another big problem. So this is one of the difficulties, obstacles we uh, face sometimes when we go to report and to recognize such cases. Next one, please. Refugee woman, uh, refugee woman in the camps, they are suffering for different reasons because we notice that in different countries that uh, the refugee women, they are not getting the full support as the male they are getting, especially in the camps. Even the better places for the male, not for the female. There's no special uh, facilities for them, uh, no special bathrooms, no for special kitchen for them. This is some kind of uh, suffering the uh, uh, woman uh, in, as a refugee in the camps they are uh, facing every day. Even if you try to get some data about what's going on, it's too difficult. There's no uh, programs, no uh, uh, good uh, combine to explain to the woman what they can do if something happened with them. Most of the workers, they are male. It's another problem, especially for people who are coming from Islamic background, it's not easy to the woman to go and to talk about any assaults or any violence uh, to the male person. There's a lack of female uh, workers, especially social workers in some camps, especially the big camps, not only in Germany, in, whole, in other country also. Yes, please. This is some practical guideline on how to respond to such accident. 
especially when we are talking about sexual, the registration, it should be, as we say, take uh, in account the woman prefer to talk to female, especially those refugee women who are coming from Islamic back uh, countries. So it should be available. The access to the help, to the support should be available with uh, a female uh, worker, not with male worker. And every incident or case reported or mentioned or uh, claimed by any woman, it should be examined and be assessed to take the required action for that. Next one, please. Also, we, she, uh, we have to uh, inform the woman, the refugee woman, about what they have to do if they are facing such cases. Like example, they need to be medically examined to, be, to, to report the case. We cannot file a case in the court, like example, unless we have an evidences. They have to go to the doctor. Doctor have to report the case to see what the findings, uh, especially when we are talking again about sexual uh, violence. Uh, even, like example, uh, in such cases, uh, sexual cases, we have uh, to tell the woman to avoid to washing themselves immediately because that will uh, correct the evidences that will be very important in the court against the abuser. Um, even if there's some uh, evidences uh, around the place where the abusing uh, took place, it should be kept and because that will help in the future. Don't clean anything, this is the advice. I am talking here as a forensic doctor. We are used to work with the police and with the judge, with the investigators. Everything should be kept because it's very important evidence to file a case against the abuser. Otherwise, he will uh, can uh, uh, survive with his uh, action unless there's uh, a solid uh, very uh, evidences against him. Next one, please. In all cases, we have to take in consideration for social workers, for anyone uh, working with the refugee, that the safety, physical safety of the victim is the most important, especially after suffering of some kind of violence. So we have to protect her. We have to prevent a further suffering because sometimes in some places when uh, it's that known this lady or this girl uh, has, uh, uh, she had sexually abused, that will harm her more than to keep that uh, in secret. So we have to prevent any further suffering for the victim. Also the best interest of the victim should be taken into consideration. And in all times we have to respect the right of the woman to talk or not to talk. Some people say, we, I don't want to talk about that. I want, want to file this case and that should be respected. Now we will go to the preventive uh, measures, what we can do to help in minimize or stop such cases against refugee women. There are many uh, level of preventive measures that we can talk about. I will start with the general one. General one, and it's very important, it's about the design and location of the refugee camp. You can uh, watch in the media, in the news, in the articles, how the design was sometimes very bad for the refugee. Where it's crowded, a lot of people, women and men in the same place without uh, any uh, borders. They are together hundreds of people. This is location and design. It's very important if we want to prevent or to minimize the cases of the violence against women. So, Sometimes symbol could be done, like example, the washing facilities should be separated for women from the male facilities, even the bathroom, uh, the kitchens. It's simple uh, actions, but it can help in minimize, let's say, not uh, totally finish this uh, violence. So lightening is very important. In some camp, you will notice the light is not that good, so it's too difficult for some women to, to protect themselves or for some people. And we see a lot of young people here 
between the refugee more than 60 to 70 persons they are al and the women around 30 to 40. <coughs> it's different from one country to another but it's general statistic so a lot of uh, males people and also maybe if they will find a good situation to make to abuse someone they will do that we cannot control everyone here so we should uh, take in consideration some something to prevent that and to minimize such actions by a simple uh, planning for uh, the location this is also very important public information campaigns i think all people who are interested to minimize such violence they have to do that from the host country or uh, ngos organization or anyone who is interested in that to talk about this subject in the camps. We have to go to those people. We have to uh, make the awareness campaign for everyone, how the uh, female can uh, access to the help if they are suffering, what they can do if someone try to abuse them, and what they uh, have to do in such cases. But always we have to take in consideration these cultural sensitivities for Islamic uh, culture, it's not easy to talk about uh, these cases, especially for the majority of the women. They will consider that it's under uh, what, what we call the type or it's not allowed it to be talking about. But we have to inform those ladies about what they, are, what, what they have right here in this country and what they can do if someone try to, uh, to, make, to abuse them. Next one, please. This is also important. I personally noticed that in some camps there are some rumors for some ladies. If you can do some sex services, you will get some money. Or for the others, it's very important for the interested people, for the social workers, for the NGOs, to stop such rumors in the camps about getting money from doing some sex uh, services for the people. Now, what we can do with male, because the abuser usually is male, is a man. I think it's very important to understand uh, what we can do here, because it's easy, not that difficult, but at the same time, it will need uh, everyone to be cooperate with that. And it's important to note that if the refugees themselves did not participate in such kind of planning or strategy, that will not help because no, no uh, the authority here or any other country, they don't have the staff maybe, enough staff to take care of such cases. So we have to work with the refugee themselves, with the people who are ready to help, to involve in such activity to prevent and to protect women against violence. It's also important to educate all refugee about the law of the country of asylum, by example, here. What is the uh, penalties? What is the punishment they will get if you try to do? Because maybe in their country, it's uh, to make some violence, it's uh, allowed, it's not a big problem. But here, there's a very clear, very strict uh, regulation against that. And many of people, they don't know. This awareness also, they have to know about the penalties association with the violence, especially about sexual violence. What is also important with the male is trying to, to change, to modify the negative attitude about the victim, especially when you are talking about sexual uh, abused uh, woman. Because in some culture, when, uh, even if the woman got raped or abused sexually by someone, the people start blaming her, not blaming him or the, the, the person who did that. It's sometimes strange, but that's happening. So all effort should be done to modify this attitude by educating those people and by discussing, uh, discussing with them. The most important things to understand the influence of the religious leaders, because especially those people who are coming from Islamic background, 
they are the leaders or the religious people, they can affect them to explain what they have and what they have not to do. It's very important to involve those people to advise the refugee about the uh, woman rights and about uh, the violence against women. Men of quality respect women's equality. That's good for people to know, especially the refugee. Now, what we can do with the women and the girls as a refugee, also to help to prevent such cases. The first things we have to make every woman and girls aware of their rights. Uh, this is a responsibility for everyone who can help to make this woman knows what are their rights in this country. They have rights and they can say stop that, they can uh, file a cases against any abuser. It's very important to aware the woman and the girls as a refugee with their rights in this country. Yeah. It's also important to aware the woman and the girls where and how they can ask for or seek for assistance if they have some problem, if they have faced some people who try to abuse them. It should be clear process for them. It should be everywhere written. If you face something, you can do one, two, three. You can call this number. It's the responsibility also for the authority and social workers and any, any uh, NGOs, organizations interested in uh, prevent uh, violence against women. It also should be uh, clear to them, those people who are trying to abuse you, they maybe will face a very strict punishment. We have to, to inform everyone, especially the woman, about what they can do in case they are suffering or uh, exposing to such cases. Uh, the awareness uh, could be in different topics, please. We can use all these tools to approach the woman and the girls. Whatever we can do, it could be done through media, direct lecturers, visiting them, newspaper, whatever we can do, we have to do it if we want to make this awareness for the woman. This is about uh, the host government. There are some guidelines, it's well known, I will not talk a lot about it because I want to keep it open for discussion if so, someone wants to discuss, but we can go very quickly. So what the government here, the authority, in any, the host government can do, how she can enforce the, the law here uh, to protect women, how to make a good uh, process for investigation, the complaints uh, against the abuse and how they can uh, prosecute them. Yes, please. Also, all this should be done by the authority, by the government of the host country. We have here to understand if we want to finish or to minimize the violence against women, some action should be taken, some resettlement program for the refugee women and girl. We have to build a system, how to collect data and uh, to, because we, we don't know exactly how many cases are there. We don't have such case, such program or software or system that we can uh, report, how the case will be reported, how many cases we don't know. It's just, uh, we heard some cases here and there. It should be something, a good system for data collection for violence against women. And because now we have a very huge number of uh, refugees, millions, so we need such uh, action and that should be done also in cooperation between the refugees themselves and between the authority here. Women rights. All women should be aware of their rights. Right to life, right to equality, right to liberty, 
right of protection, the right of uh, against to be free against all form of discrimination, uh, the right of getting a very high standard of physical and mental <coughs> health, the right to to take to get a good condition in the work, and this is human rights. It's well known everywhere. This is the human rights. Uh, I finished, and uh, if you have any question, we can talk. Thank you. I don't want to talk a lot to keep it open. If someone wants to discuss about or to add something, just to make a, a quick and a fast line. I am ready for any discussion. If someone has any discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please. Thank you for the choice. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I would like to address some problems. Yeah. We, uh, we are fem uh, female refugees here in Deutschland, New York. Yeah. And of course, we was not living here from the beginning. So mm -hmm. uh, we have a different culture, as you stated, yeah. from our background, from our mm -hmm. country. For me, as example, I'm coming from Sudan. Yeah. I lived there all my life, and now I have been here. Good. I'm a witness and sometimes the victim of so much violence against women in our country. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm a little bit more brave to express it. I'm a little bit more brave to study it. All the others are not. So um, whenever anybody can want or to give a hand to help, yeah. she's more afraid to get the help. And I understand this because I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. We, as a Sudanese woman, from the beginning of our life, three years old or four years old, she had to get into a very cruel operation. Mm -hmm. Maybe most of the people here even don't understand it. It's, when I came here, I, for, uh, uh, for me, it was normal. And uh -huh. when I came here and I was at the doctor, because I had a baby, and the doctor said, what is this? <laughs> yeah. I was a little bit, what? You don't know? Then I really suddenly um, know that it's not normal. And then I started to read about it, it's, it was not really normal. Mm -hmm. But I lived all my life, and I'm still living, and I will die as a not normal female. Mm -hmm. And this is hurts, okay? And why is this? It is done, and then uh, after it is done, yes, you are a girl, you put, uh, no, you are, you are a little bit different, not a little bit, very, very different. Mm -hmm. And uh, your honor is what you are. If you lost your honor, you better die. Uh -huh. This is what you get from the beginning of your life, this is what you have to understand, and this is what you have to live with. To accept, yeah. Okay. After all this um, killing operation, it's really killing. Mm -hmm. I'm living as a, a zombie then, okay? And after this, in the conflicts area, yeah, yeah, most of the girls and the women get raped. Mm -hmm. If they like, or if they don't, okay? Um, and so then we have in one place, in one day, mm -hmm. one place, one day, 200 women and girls get raped. And then they, okay, um, they let them go. After they left them, they let them go. But actually, 180 of them are now dead. Some killed themselves, some killed for the honor of the family, or the tribe. 20 only left, most of them outside Sudan. They have to run away. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, when, okay, the most lucky people, the survivors who are coming here, and, uh, well, for any reason, she get also some violence here. Mm -hmm. She cannot talk about it. She cannot express it because she is very, very weak to say it. She is very weak to handle it. She is very weak to, to face it. She is very weak to talk about it. She is very afraid because that is what she raised with. Yeah. She is more degraded, more degraded, more degraded. And she has to live like this for the rest of her life. And this is one of the problems we have, maybe not only me, maybe not only the Sudanese people, no, no. mostly. Mm -hmm. And this is really um, high class suffering. To, um, to be more weak, to fight even your problem. To be more weak, uh, weaker than to, uh, to suffer, or to tell somebody what you suffer about. Uh -huh. So um, I, I really don't know how it is going to solve it. And I'm very brave to talk it here now. Good. But if it is my community, I mean, if the most here are Sudanese, I will not talk. Not because um, it's more. <laughs> yeah. Not because it is not a problem. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. But because if I talk about it, then it is bigger problem. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just, just I want to thank you about uh, what you are talking. We are talking about the same problem, actually. How we can encourage everyone to talk. It's the first step. And how we can find the assistance, the help. That's what we are trying to do, to build a network, to put to in cooperation with everyone here, with New Border Academy, with NGOs here, with the authority, how we can build something that enable any woman who is maybe exposed or suffering from violence to get her right or to get the help and the support. I understand what you, what you are saying. If you are coming from the beginning, we talk about that. Yes, I agree. I understand what you are talking about. This operation done for the woman when they are young. Yes, we don't want this suffering and this abusing to continue us here. We want to stop that. That's what we have to do all together. Yeah? Yeah? It's not working. I speak in English. Good. Okay, and um, I work with uh, migrants and refugees. I teach German and I got direct experience mm -hmm. of women who tell me they've been abused in camps. So what I really would like to say, it's really great work uh, that you're raising awareness mm -hmm. about sexual um, abuse, violence, violence abuse. and so on. Unfortunately, you are a little bit optimistic about the German law <laughs> because um, I know of many, many cases mm -hmm. where exactly what you just described happened, that the woman is always to blame. Yeah? And the court cases unfortunately turn out to be negative for the victims because um, it is just in theory mm -hmm. that um, sexual violence is a crime and it is stated, stated as such, mm -hmm. but when it comes to court cases, in most cases, um, the judges decide that the women did not offend themselves, defend themselves, probably, probably, and mainly because they were scared or mainly because they lost their voices, which is a very typical psychological dynamic mm -hmm. between uh, the perpetrator and the victim. So I don't have an answer for people, refugee women who live uh, in a camp, apart from saying solidar solidarity, uh, t yes, solidarity, and shout or make yourself uh, being heard. Because if you stay silent, um, you have no chance, and the law will probably not protect you. Thanks very much. Thank you. So maybe we have to work together now <laughs> with the Deutsche woman, eh? <laughs> with the situation. Yes. Any question? Yeah. So hello everybody, I'm very happy to see uh, lots of people here discussing on a very important topic. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some people in our community that they uh, believe in or they think mm -hmm. that uh, sometimes the women are themselves, they're becoming uh, victim by the way that they are wearing, the way that they are behaving or some other things. It's not my personal idea actually, but it's mm -hmm. the uh, ideas or the beliefs from, from some people that they live in our community. I wanted to have your idea about it mm -hmm. and also uh, how can we change the idea or the beliefs of some uh, s such kind of people mm -hmm. that they uh, respect to the women are not, uh, for example, violent to the woman Mm -hmm. uh, even in every condition or situation the women are. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, actually, uh, as you said, sometimes, and as uh, she said, sometimes the woman will be blamed even when she is abused, especially sexually abused. And it was shocked for me to say even the law here is the same situation. So some woman will be blamed because she didn't show the enough resistance against the abuser. Uh, I am forensic doctor, I can understand this situation. It's legally, it's very uh, clear for me, but maybe for you it's not clear. 
because in such cases uh, the question and the judge have to take in consideration many things. Yes, in some, some, in, some in our culture, uh, in some cultures, let's say, Arabic and Islamic culture, the woman uh, usually blamed for even if she is a victim of the violence, especially of uh, the sexual. How we can change it? It's a long process. What I am saying here, it's long. We cannot change that uh, in seconds or in days or in months. I think because if you want to change some people's mind, you will take some time. You, you, you will need first to discuss, then to explain, then to, to, have a, to add some restrictions, okay? When people are here, they have to respect the regulation and the law here. But it's not enough. I said we have to cooperate with everyone, especially with the religious leaders, if we can, to explain to those people, to the men, to the males, how they have to respect the girls and the women. It's a long process and it's need all of us to work together if we want to do that. It's not even the women in the Western country, they to, and still now some of them, they are suffering of the violence. It's take a long time of struggling to get their rights. So the same here we have to start it, but we have to start it. Someone has what we are trying to do with, this, with No Border Academy or the other to start something, to at least to highlight these problems, to start talk about something. It's just the first step. Then we need to do that more. I told you it's not easy, and we don't expect to do that in uh, sooner. But we have to start, especially with the younger generation. Most here we are talking about refugee. I am not talking about the case of the violence against women in Germany. No, I am talking about the female, uh, the refugee woman, violence against refugee woman. So most of the comers here are young people. I think it's easier to discuss with them, to start change, change their mentality, as you said. It's a long process, we have to be patient, but we have to be to do that steady. We have to be sure of what we are doing if we want to access, to, to success in something. But, uh, sorry, yeah? but so the, sometimes these people that they have such kind of ideas, they yeah. accuse the women themselves in a society that they are, uh, they, they are themselves blamed that they, uh, for example, that some people or some men are uh, use, abusing them or mm -hmm. uh, vo uh, bringing uh, violence to them. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think, or uh, is it is it right such kind of ideas to accept or no? <laughs> no. <Some. laughs> Look, uh, we should. Uh, from the beginning, know what, what, what are our aims? If we want to build a strategy, small plan, small strategy, what do you want from this workshop, from this discussion? Okay, we want to stop or minimize the violence against women. Yeah. So from the beginning, of course, we will not accept such behavior. We need everyone to live in the uh, equality, as we said. So. If a direct answer to your question, yes, no one will accept such, but how we can change it? This is a long process. To change someone believes, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. We can see that for everyone. It's need, first need to discuss with him, to explain to him, because a lot of people, they are maybe not educated well, or they coming with prejudgment uh, about a lot of things. They have this cultural background from their countries about women, as she said, in, in many countries. So we have to understand. I am saying here for the integration of the people here. In English, we said understood to be understand or understand to be understood. The people here, the Asfruti and the Deutsch people, they need to understand the newcomer. Then they have the, 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 the refugee will understand them. It's a uh, two ways way, okay? But from refugee side, I think a lot could be done. 
if we are refugee and we can do something, we have to do it because it's our responsibility. So to build such network between the refugee in cooperation with the others, with the support of the others, it's very important. I said here it's uh, very important for in, to protect women to rely, to depend on the refugees themselves, to build some kind of self-protection. This is the best way and the faster way that we can do that this protection, especially people here and NGOs here and the authority here can help, but they cannot be with the refugee 24 hours, yes, seven days a week. So this protection need a long process and good protection. Uh, Hello everyone. Uh, I have a, an ex like uh, my name is Sahar, so I'm from Afghanistan, and I spent seven months in the camp. So I have an example uh, for this um, how the men should respect when the woman is all, like already uh, affected by the sexual violence. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was one couple. So I don't want to mention about from which country they were. The, in the way the lady was raped by the smugglers because in the way when they were coming to, to Germany at the night they were divided in two different places the men were in one place and the women were in another place so she was raped by the smuggler mm. and then when she they came to Germany she was suffering from what happened for her in the way and Memories, she was yeah. mentally going to even mad and she was like and then as has her husband was threatening him that to not tell this to anyone because of the, the like the shame, yeah, because, yeah. because they were a family, like reputation. Mother, said, big family came to here together, and it, she was suffering with this problem for almost three months, and finally she she couldn't stay like this and she fed up with what was happening with her and she was going mad and she really needed to a doctor or she really needed to a psychologist something to treat her but then uh, she opened up everything and then what i want to say that we should do like uh, we should do something like maybe to provide some kind of trainings some kind of works for those such kind of men in order to train them yeah. how to respect when they are member of families exactly. or women when their wives are and who, whoever from their families are affected by such kind of uh, issues and also because uh, they should also uh, when in the it lots of cases happen like this in the way like usually the sexual violence happens in the way for the refugees when mm -hmm. they come either they are from Syria from Afghanistan from any country but when they find out such cases in the camps or in any place, they should immediately take an action for these men. Because maybe if they take the, if they take this lady's example for the all and provide some kind of trainings for the people who are staying at the camp, maybe it will be a, a good lesson for most of those women <coughs> that they are silent still. Yeah. They don't raise their voice because of the shame, because of the honor of the family. So thank you. Yeah. This is what we talk about, this awareness. Yeah, it's a long process. We have to discuss with everyone, especially with the woman. And maybe some women prefer women to talk to them about that, not uh, men or, or males. So it's also important to build a group that can help women to be aware. And the other group can explain to the men what they have to change about their uh, view to the woman. Any other question? Thank you very much. Yeah, sorry. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. I just want to add what the other friends already talked about, but let me just make a short comments uh, that uh, as a woman we have to fight for our right. Yeah. However, we have been unborn in the underdevelopment countries our grandmothers fight for their rights, that the history has proved it, and I think even our grandchildren will, as a females will also fight for their rights. And even now that we are in a development countries like Europeans, 
uh, still we are suffering or struggling for our rights. So right is not given, but we have to take our right. You have to fight for our right. That's the only way. And uh, secondly, I'd like to add as well about the uh, females and migrants uh, going to the job markets. There is a, uh, we feel that there is a discrimination when mm -hmm. as an immigrant, or especially as a Muslim female that you're entering to the job markets, you feel somehow not very easy to get the, the job that you are qualified for or you, the job that you dream for. Mm -hmm. And uh, very recently in Stuttgart, Baden-Württemberg, we have initiated a project uh, with the other migrant females, uh, but we have a project coordinator, a German female, that uh, we want to uh, go to the female migrants, uh, especially those that they are facing uh, due to their religious uh, to enter to the job market. So I still want to hear from you or other uh, friends here that if they have uh, such experiences to share with us. And our project has been very recently uh, initiated in Stuttgart. And uh, we also want to enter to the organizations, to the companies, and will uh, meet the people that what is the, uh, because the law has given this right for uh, everyone in Germany to, to have the right of the work. Mm -hmm. uh, as per their qualifications, experiences. So uh, what is that discrimination there? That why uh, females, especially Muslim females, uh, uh, with the scarf or without the scarf, we are not uh, very comfortable finding a job. Good. Yeah, yes, which is the name of your organization? Uh, that's not the organization, that's a very new project. That's called WOW, with or without the veil. And currently we are six members of the team. Mm -hmm. And uh, very recently we have initiated, and uh, we just want, in one side, and also we want to help the female migrants uh, to come together, and we will also help to, uh, them to get their skills for how to apply, where yeah. to apply, as for their uh, uh, qualification and professional, so that they also find their way in the job market. And on the other hand, we want to also enter to the uh, companies and in the job markets, and also make the awareness that. Uh, there shouldn't be any discrimination given the opportunities for mm -hmm. the migrant females. But do you have any reported cases about that or only just uh, expecting something like that? No, we have had so many cases, yeah. We have heard that uh, um, there are so many discrimination because open, uh, openly no one will tell you that because you are a Muslim or you are a migrant female, we are not giving you the chance. But there's been really failed, so. Mm -hmm. And we are also aware that there are so many educated females among these refugees people as well that they want to start and do something. Good. Thank you. As I said before, uh, we need to build this network for all people who are interested as a, a, a female or a male refugee or from uh, this country. Um, this struggling for uh, the rights is not easy, as you said. We have, as a woman has to fight for their right. No one will give anything for free. But it's good if someone uh, from the other side maybe help, it's okay. So it's to be, uh, I believe in that also, woman has to fight for their rights. No one will give something for free. If they want your right, you have to fight for that. And you have to be ready to defend about your right. From our side, maybe we can help, we can support, but if the woman doesn't fight for her uh, freedom, for her rights, no one else will uh, give her that. I agree, and it's a good idea to, to build this network between all interested uh, groups or uh, any activities. Now you have uh, No Border Academy address, you can communicate with them. I think they are ready to help in such uh, issue. Yeah? Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Anne Katrin um, from the Welcome and Learning Center of No Border Academy. And I just wanted to say, just just to uh, let people know that um, in, it's only in Unibook, but of course there are a lot of um, women groups organizing self-organization. But for now in Unibook there's no non-self-organized group of, mm -hmm. of women, refugee women yet. So um, of course we don't want to build a group for refugee women that would be really really bad but we 
uh, want to offer the space. We have a uh, opening. Uh, we are opening on Friday only for women. So also like so happy. <laughs> like, uh, just I think what I can only speak from my perspective as a of course non-refugee, but I think it's it's really important that um, or just to say that I or we as women also totally try to support mm -hmm. and I think I mean and I wanted to say that I'm sorry I'm really excited for um, <laughs> nervous that those you know issues of facing violence against women is really it's yeah not a cultural thing it's a structural thing like also yeah. Almost every girl I know who is from Germany has faced some sort of violence yeah. against women from men. So we should fight together and uh, yeah, make this, I don't know, change opinions and... Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyone need... Yeah. Yeah, but if I add to what you just said is um, we have again the space I mean, who talks about sexualized violence and how to prevent it. We again have a, a male pre presenting us and uh, um, talking to us what are, what are supposed to be the strategies and how we women or refugee women should organize. I, I find this... Um, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for commenting on that. It was also my man. And I have another question. Like right now, and my the place where I live, we have a, we're trying to to um, create a I don't know group or space, and we don't have like the infrastructure in mind yet for for women who want to fight against uh, sexual assault and who want to fight against like sexism in general and especially with the focus of the, the media in Germany right now is totally racist about this topic and for us we are right now we are really struggling we're really insecure because all the things that we did in the last weeks was like going out on the street and fighting against Nazis who tried to make a racist discourse mm. out of the discourse against sexism and so the last weeks we spent by saying no, there has no like feminism is anti-racist. What the fuck are you doing? So, but then we thought, okay, that is really important to say so. But sexual assault doesn't end from being anti-fascist. It ends from being anti-sexist. And so we are really, really insecure about how we can build structures that like fight sexism and racism at the same time. And we are really hoping for support from people who have both experienced, who have experiences with sexism and racism, like women of color or women who don't identify as white and privileged in that way, to support and like join our space or group and like help us out with what we can do to fight both things at the same time and really end sexual assault by not um, supporting stupid fascist ideas in German about like cultural blah 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 blah. And so we are. We would be really, really happy if, like, you could join up with some ideas about how to address this issue in a way that's actually overcoming power structures that we have. I just want to add something because this is really interesting what you said. Um, just one, just one sentence um, from empowering um, campaigns against sexual violence and violence in general, no means no. And that's the thing, uh, the uh, abuser or perpetrator does not uh, accept. And then in the terms of law, in the eyes of the law, it gets turned around. Mm. But for women, this is exactly the problem they're facing when it happens. Um, because they are, they are made uh, f yeah, to feel that it's their guilt, they are to blame. And this is what we have to change. I think worldwide, to be honest. Yeah.
just uh, I want to, to say yes, all efforts, everything should be done together. It's better everyone if we have something to participate. It's a long, long run, long term uh, struggle against violence. So it should be done by cooperation from everyone and everywhere. And I agree with you, it's not only for the refugee woman, it's a woman problems worldwide. Yeah. They are very vulnerable, of course. Exactly. Thank you for your attendance. Uh, anything else? Thank you.